Hey guys, alright, so this is basically going to be a continuation of this tutorial that I posted on my YouTube page, uh, which shows you how to create the smoke simulation and how to export VDB simulations and bring them over to Cinema 4D. So um, you can see I've already got everything set up here and ready in my folder. So obviously I'm going to uh, recommend that you guys watch that tutorial first so that you can get to uh, this state that I'm in right now, where I've got all of my VDB sequences rendered out. So um, the old method that I was using in that tutorial, well, it's not really old. It's for rendering one particular uh, frame from the sequence. Uh, basically, what you do is uh, I'll open up Octane Render. I'll go to Objects and Octane VDB Volume. Let me minimize that. And you can see over here we've got our volume set up. So I would go to VDB Volume. I would go to VDB. And then here by File, I would bring in... Uh, that particular VDB sequence. So it's a 001. And with this method, we were only capable of uh, rendering uh, one, uh, one particular frame, right? So you guys can still do that if there's one particular frame uh, with the smoke that you find to be the most uh, interesting. You guys can still render that single frame. Uh, but in this quick tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can render uh, this entire sequence. So 100 frames within uh, Octane Render. So if you guys want to render out an animation, we can render out all of these frames. And I actually, I don't have any idea how to do this. There was someone on Instagram that contacted me. His name was Collector. And he was actually asking me how to do this. And he found out a way uh, how to uh, get this entire sequence to work within Cinema 4D. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to rename all of these files. So in the tutorial that I told you guys to watch, this is the, basically the file name that I decided to go with, but we need to rename this. So I'm going to select everything. Let's go back to the first one. I'm going to right click, go rename, and you just want to type the number one and then press enter. So as soon as you do that, you can see that it, uh, uh, every file name has the number one in front of it, then it's got one, two, three, four in brackets. So basically, uh, Cinema 4D is going to read all of these files in this particular sequence and by naming it one it recognizes all of these VDB sequences and it basically uh, turns it into like a full sequence animation so back in Cinema 4D over here by start we want to put it on one and then on end I rendered out a hundred frames as you can see so I'm gonna put that on 100 come on Okay, so it's just taking a little bit of time to read this. Alright, so my Cinema 4D ended up crashing, but that's not a big problem. I just went ahead and set up the scene again. As you can see, I created the VDB volume. And uh, hereby, I'm going to go back into the VDB tab. Now, there's something really important I need to uh, mention over here. And I noticed this from trial and error. If I import my VDB file first, and then I specify my start and end frames, the program tends to hang and it just ends up hanging for eternity and you have to force quit the program so that's really annoying so to get past that problem what you want to do is you want to go and input uh, your start and end frames before you actually import uh, import uh, the vdb sequence so i'm going to say by start one and my end is going to be on 100 because i rendered out 100 sequences right so once i've done that i can go ahead click on file go to my folder and uh, I can just import the first file, right? Because since everything has got a one in front of it, a Cinema 40 is going to recognize uh, this, pat this particular type of layout in this format. And it's basically going to import the entire sequence. So it's going to read all of these files. That's why it was important that we renamed uh, all of the files with a one in the front. So I just need to import the first one. So I'll click on open and it's as simple as that. So uh, you'll see if I zoom in here and I click on play, you'll see that it's actually going to start playing uh, the animation, that entire sequence. So this is really cool. It's really handy if you actually want to render out those VDB sequences. Uh, but now, here's a really common problem, right? And this is something that I'm troubleshooting from my first video as well, uh, that I encountered at 
that I encountered and uh, it's basically how do we resize this VDB volume. Now there's two ways that we can do that. We can change the import unit size over here. So we can choose maybe uh, decameters, meters, uh, inches, feet, whatever, but um, then we basically constrain to that particular uh, unit, right? But there is another way to resize this VDB volume that gives us a bit more control and all you have to do is just go to this cube over here by model, hold down the left mouse button, it's going to bring up this drop down menu that's related to this uh, particular icon and you just want to click on object. And once you've clicked on object, I can press my shortcut, uh, my shortcut uh, R for scale and you'll see that I'm able to scale this uniformly to whatever size I want it to be. So that's basically how you rescale these VDB volume guys. And you can see you can do it non-uniformly or uniformly. Uh, but this just gives you a lot more control instead of, you know, being constrained to particular units. So that's how you would go ahead uh, rescaling your volume. And then I'm not going to go into any other kind of rendering. If you guys want to see how I set up lighting, go ahead and watch uh, the first tutorial. Uh, but for some of you, you guys are already coming from that first tutorial, so you already have an idea of what to do from here for setting up lighting. But you'll see that, let's go back to frame zero, if we click on play, there we go, we can see in our viewport over there that our smoke is rendering. So really cool and really easy to do, guys. And uh, now you can have some animated smoke within Octane Render. So have some fun with that. And thanks to Collector for sharing those tips and tricks with me. I just thought it would be beneficial to put this video out for you guys in case you actually wanted to create animated sequences with the smoke that you created in Houdini. Oh, just one more thing, guys. You'll notice that uh, this animation, when you get to uh, more complex uh, sequences that were rendered out, you'll see when the, the simulation starts getting a bit more complex, it's going to take a little bit more time to go to the next frame. Uh, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And again, uh, maybe for some of you guys that are not really familiar with the timeline in Cinema 4D, if you want to increase the amount of frames, all you have to do over here is just type in the number. So I have 100 frames. You can see mine was on 90. I'm going to type in 100, click on Enter, and then this arrow, you just want to drag it to the right. So now I'll be rendering that uh, entire sequence from, from uh, frame 0 to frame 100. And you'll see if I'm scrubbing here, we've got our animation over there. So it's pretty cool, guys. It gives you a lot more control. And this is also another easy way, you know, instead of loading individual frames, you can just load the entire sequence and scrub through the timeline uh, to find a particular uh, smoke sequence that you like. This is if you're going for an individual frame that you just want to render. You can do this just to find that particular frame that looks really interesting and then apply some light into it and render out an ind uh, individual frame like that. So. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool method for uh, analyzing the entire sequence or rendering out an animation. Right, so I'm going to end it there, guys, and uh, this is going to be the final goodbye. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for some more tutorials, and goodbye. All right.